Let's go. Yeah. Welcome to Thursday Night Live. Keep that clapping going for your host tonight, Jeff Hodge. I do want to say this. Uh, women logic. I don't get it. I'm a guy. Don't get women logic. For example, um, it's been brought to my attention that some of you ladies will quicker send me a, a coochie shot before you tell me how old you are. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You ever ask a lady, how old are you? You should never ask a lady, huh? Hey, that is rude. Can I have a coochie shot? Oh, no problem. Did you get it? <laughs> how old do you think I look? Uh, it looks about 50. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Can y'all tell I'm single? <laughs> Too many coochie shots. <clears throat> um, I recently uh, got pulled over by a cop. I hate when they ask you those stupid questions. Do you know how fast you were going? Like, I'm going to tell on myself. Yes, officer, I was doing 90. There's a hand glove in the glove box and a body in the trunk. I don't know. <laughs> don't ask me. Tell me. That's all I'm saying. Just tell me. Don't ask me all that, you know. Uh, never get pulled over with the kids in the car. They'll tell everything on you. I met a mistake getting pulled over with my son. He was five. You know, I'm living with my driver's license. The cop walks up. He starts talking to him. I don't see him. Mr. Policeman, my daddy going to jail. I saw you back there, told my daddy, told me to shut up and sit down. And then he put his beer under the seat. <laughs> he got a gun like yours in this box over here. <laughs> Anybody want a five-year-old? <laughs> okay, well, that's my time, folks. I'm your host. <laughs> hey. They pay me by the minute. I've made <laughs> Okay, I'm your host. Uh, we have a lot of uh, 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 good talent for you tonight. You know, come, people come from all over. For example, his first performance, she's very funny. Came all the way from Simi Valley. Give it up for Miss Eileen Whitmore. So, how's everybody? Never mind, never mind, never mind. I don't care. I really don't. Um, it turns out I'm going to be a divorcee. Yeah. I, I was going for widow. <laughs> Do you know that there's this crazy rule like you cannot take a, a nearly dead person to the undertaker? I mean, when did they start that rule? Really? <sighs> well, <sighs> on the serious side, um, my husband of 28 years, he just recently left me for an older, wealthy woman. <laughs> older. Let, let that sink in, OK? <laughs> I think her name is Babette. And, uh, you know, he, when he left, he told me that he had found his soulmate. Well, I'm hard of hearing. I heard cellmate. And turns out that she's very jealous and over, overly possessive. And, you know, I'm just really sick of hearing about all her good qualities. And, and I was shocked. I'll tell you, I was shocked because I thought he was going to come out later day gay. Yeah, um, it's been tough. I mean, it's really been tough. I had to sell the house. And, you know, finally, my adult children had to move out. And talk about not taking a hint. I mean, for the last couple of Christmases, I've given them one gift, a gift card to U-Haul. <laughs> yeah, it, and, you know, it's, 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 been, it's been really a, a tough time. And, and I, you know, his mother, my mother-in-law, you know, the woman who spawned the, the Antichrist, she calls me up all the time and says, you know, you got to go online dating, right? Now, here is a woman who is 91 years old. She broke up with her 67-year-old boyfriend to go out with somebody who was 82. Really? Really? That's like getting into my territory, you know? Really. It's terrible. So, um, so like I said, I live in Simi Valley. And, you know, I have a lot of friends who live in Hollywood, you know, and they're very snobby. They say, why do you want to go to Simi Valley? Well, you know, have you been around Hollywood and all the streets and all the pavements? Do you know how awful the sidewalks are? Do you guys get out at all? Let me see. <laughs> okay. Okay, because they're sidewalks, you see, and you walk on them, and usually they're smooth, right? 
Well, in Hollywood, they're terrible. You know, if you go on down the main road, they're really great, you know, because they want the tourists all to be there. But when you turn a corner, terrible sidewalks. Well, you know, Simi Valley, we have beautiful sidewalks. They really do. Now, granted, it's not very ethnically diverse. I mean, it isn't. It isn't. I, I'm the first one to admit that, OK? But you know, recently, in my neighborhood, there was a black family that moved in. And I'm telling you, the neighbors, we were so excited. I mean, every day, we were knocking on the door, offering them cookies, baked goods. Finally, the man of the house came out and says, enough with the baked goods. We came here for the sidewalks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, you know, um, I think my time is up. So thank you very much. Your next performer, uh, we've had him on the show many times before. Every time he, he comes, he always surprises me. Very talented. Give it up for Mr. Dan Nice Wonder. <laughs> I think I said it right this time. Did I say it right this time? Yes, you I did. did. I you did. Got it. Oh, okay, I got it. I'm getting better. You got it. All right. How's everybody doing? Yeah. Okay, we're going to do some music now. We're going to start off a little wild. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. I like to read books. Volume! I need love, but that's not all. Something to stimulate my brain. It doesn't have to be that deep. Something to take with me on a plane. I like to read a book, write a song that has a hook, travel to exotic places. I want to read a book, well, there's always a story to find of any kind. Not just look at the music, I want to read a book. Oh, 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 yeah! When I can't make it to the movies One more than the spoken word Photographs with some captions From the unusual to the absurd I like to read a book Write a song that has a hook Travel to exotic places. I want to read a book. Well, there's always a story to find. Something better of any kind. Not just look at the pictures. I want to read a book. Oh, 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 oh. baby wants a little romance. How about a biography? Sci-fi, fantasy, adventure, or a mystery. Woohoo! Woohoo! Hang it out at the library. Bookstore in my spare time. Lots of cool stuff up on the shelves. From the unusual to the sublime. I like to read a book, write a song that has a hook, travel to exotic places. I want to read a book, well, there's always a story to find, subject matter of any kind. Not just look at the pictures, I want to read a book. Oh, oh, oh. I want to read a book. Oh, oh, oh. I want to read a book. Oh, oh, oh. I want to read a book. Oh, oh, oh. I want to read a book. Thank you, thank you. Let's do a little shift. I'm going to make a change on you guys because I do that. I host the Now Man Show, also here on the Arroyo Channel. Check it out if you want to see interviews with David Bowie's Piano Man, Stevie Wonder's producer, Dennis Kucinich, Chink Uger, a bunch of interesting people. Uh, let's change it. 
I'm going to be spontaneous. Let's do the theme song of the Now Man Show, Fun to the Nth Degree. I like to do this. It's fun. Here we go. To the Nth Degree. Welcome one and all to the carnival and to the festivity of the diversity. A celebration like a party atmosphere. Live life to the fullest and keep the mind clear. I know it sounds cliche, be the best that we can be. Open up your eyes, tell me what do you see? Gotta use common sense when it comes to having fun. Don't have to be a rocket scientist to know how this is done. And I say fun, love, live into the nth degree. Fun, love, live into the nth degree. Climb the top of a mountain, surf like Superman. Build yourself a dream home, make some career plan. Travel around the world, read a stimulating book. Be passionate about each day, create a brand new look. Welcome everyone, we the same as you and me. Knowing that this one feels the same way too. And I say fun, love, live into the nth degree. Fun, love, live into the nth degree. Sing along, you know it. Fun, love, live it to the nth degree. Fun, live it. Live it. Yeah. The past is gone. The future is yet to come. It's now. Right now. The present is here. The future is near, but it's right now. You know, being with you makes the party complete. So keep the body moving and show us your happy feet. The end of the night, when all is said and done, I want to know I did the right thing. Had a lot of fun and I say fun, love, live it to the nth degree. Fun, love, live it to the nth Fun, love, live it to the nth degree. Okay, hold the note. Fun, fun, love, live it to the nth degree. Fun, love. Live that to the nth degree. Thank you very much. Thursday Night Live! Dan Nightwonder. All right, uh, your next comedian I overheard in the green room talking about her height. She looked perfectly hot, tall enough for me, but you know. I'll let her explain. Give it up for the very, all of them, Lawrence, Kansas, give it up for Ms. Isabel Herman, come on down. I like them shoes, man. Them CFM pumps, I like those. Thank Ooh, you. Those are, you're tall enough, I like that. Because I got the heels on. Hello, Pasadena. Should I say Pasadrima? This place is adorable. I feel like I should do a song and a dance to follow that up. Um, so I will. This is a little bit of a rap that I wrote about um, my dating life, um, but mostly just last Saturday night. And it goes a lot like this. Saturday night started off like this. We had a couple drinks and then we got pissed. We headed to the dance floor to romance more. Bumping and grinding, everything was going fine till I saw this look in his eyes. It was fear despite he had, oh no, popped a boner. It was a chub in the middle of the club. I was darting left and passing right, but oh my God, it was still inside. So I went to get a drink and found a chair to sink in. I got to thinking. 
Let's head to Mackers. We'll get some snackers. Diet Coke and some fries. Please, my hands pressed between my knees, trying to hold back a laughter. The attack of the dance floor boner. Oh, no. If you got a boner in your pants, put your hands up, up, up. Yeah. So I'm single. <laughs> All the way from Kansas, I come from a big family. I'm one of five. Um, and I've got a baby brother who's 11 years younger than me. And I don't know if y'all out there watching, you have siblings that are a lot younger than you, but I grew up going through puberty with a kindergartner running around. And you know kindergartners, they got brilliant imaginations. They're just weirdos all over, you know? My little brother would sneak into my room and find my tampon stash, because I wasn't allowed to have tampons, because Bible Belt, somehow they were the devil's cotton balls on strings. But <laughs> he would get them, and he would, he would unwrap them, and then he would run around the front yard, pow, 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 yeah! Shooting them off at the neighbor girl, Sydney, <laughs> pretending he was some sort of a power ranger. Well, I have this to say to you, little brother. Nobody defeated Lord Zed by soaking up monthly vagina blood. <laughs> That's how you catch vampires. Gross. Everybody knows that. So in my attempts to date here in the Los Angeles greater area, I've done the online ventures. And I've noticed that there is a site for everybody out there. There's like OkCupid, okay JDate, Christian Mingle, Blacks Meetup, but I found one quite particular, one for Trump supporters. Now I know what y'all are thinking, you're like, oh man, they're gonna procreate, yeah, and that's terrifying. But if you wanna check it out, all political judgment aside, it's called OkKKDate.com. <laughs> and when you're attracted to somebody, you just swipe white. I'll let it sink in, you, you get it. Um, but w with that political movement in mind, I know that women are taking over. And I say this because I know Hillary's in the media and everything, and she's got some sneaky plans up her sleeve, you know? It's, it's not that she leaked all these secrets and you know is our generation's deep throat. Oh, no, 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 she did not deep throat. She licked some booty hole. You know how I know this and how I know women are taking over because of the booty hole looking. You see, all you have to do is just whisper all of your wants and needs just straight up in there. Ladies, it's called subanal messaging. <laughs> Take note. <laughs> so <laughs> Los Angeles has its way with me. Um, I recently got my car impounded. And I know all of you here in Los Angeles, you've had the car tow experience. But I wasn't so much worried that maybe I should be a little more responsible with where I park my car at this age in my life. I was just worried about my car. You see, I drive a Yaris. And do y'all know anything about cars? The Yaris is the gay cousin to the Prius. <laughs> and I know y'all are thinking, you're like, oh wait, I thought the Prius was the Toyota family homo. No, you were wrong. My car hides in the closet wearing lipstick. You see, my car was gonna be the car yard prison bitch. Am I allowed to say that on TV? Um, <laughs> my car's got a real tight tailpipe. Jeez, my car has anxiety attacks going over 55. You know, I get on the freeway and it's like, ah, you don't wanna do this, do you? There's an exit. I do wanna do it, car. I do wanna do it we'll make it to 45 miles per hour, we'll get you there. And I'm talking to myself, because my car is a car. <laughs> <laughs> so being single, I've done, you know, this uh, the amazing thing of where like, I get crushes on weird people. So I, I recently got this crush on my coffee shop guy. You know, it's like I see him every day with a smile, everything like that. But I recently saw him out of the coffee shop, which kind of is weird, like, oh, what, you have a life outside of, roasting beans, but he was with this beautiful Asian girl. And I'm not, I have nothing against, you know, the yellow fever, because I get it, <laughs> you know. Without this push-up bra and four rolls of socks, I too have Asian-sized boobies. My boobs are like a stoner's dream snack come true. They're like pancakes, 
topped with pepperonis. <laughs> I'm gonna leave you guys with um, this final little story. So I, I got to live out my nerd dream and go to Comic-Con this year. And uh, uh -huh, you would say that. But then the weirdo came out and I realized why I'm still single. You see, I was right in the middle of a Batman Pikachu sandwich and uh, Jared Leto walks by. And what do you do when Jared Leto walks by? What's, what's the correct answer? You think that would be the correct answer, but you know what I did? I licked him. He was wearing a shiny pink jacket and I licked him in his stupid pink jacket. That is the wrong answer. And that is why I'm still single. But I got to lick Jared Leto. <laughs> Thank you guys, my name is Isabel Herman. Hey, I'm James. Hi, I'm Aaron. Hi, I'm Anna. I'm Jasper. And together, we're Anna Lee and the Authorities. Come check out L.V. Smith's show on The, the Sound, Sound Within. Within. Hello, this is Nice Wonder, The Now Man Show, and I'm here at Politicon with our founding fathers right now. Stop asking me questions, woman. Stop asking me questions, girl. Like whose panties are these? Whose earrings are those? You just won't let it go. Shit, I'm losing control. Losing control. Losing control. Your next uh, perform performer, um, I just found out this guy is actually a scientist. He's that smart. I have never met a smart comic. I mean, like, I met people that were smart, but never a smart, smart, smart. So this guy, very funny, the scientist of comedy. Give it up for Mr. <laughs> well, yeah, I gotta forget, I forgot his name right there. Let me... <laughs> Kevin Hickerson, come on down, Kev. I wanna make sure I got it right. <laughs> really a scientist. Thanks, John. Oh, this is fun. Uh, guys, I recently tried to give blood uh, right here in Pasadena. Um, they ask you a lot of questions. The nurse asked me, she said, sir, this is really important. Uh, have you ever paid for sex? I'm trying to find out my, you know, my history. I was like, lady, I don't know what you're thinking. Look, I'm, I'm married. I have three kids at home. Still paying for the sex I had 10 years ago. I cannot possibly <laughs> afford any more sex. It's very expensive. I'm actually here because uh, you had a uh, coupon for $5 off the taco truck. But, you know, uh, since she brought it up, I asked how much she would charge. Um, she asked me to leave. Uh, apparently, she charges more than a $5 coupon to a taco truck. Uh, I am actually a real-life scientist. I'm, I'm married to a real-life scientist. Yeah, this is a weird, uh, weird choice of things to do on Thursday, but that's what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> but being, you know, there's a plus side to, uh, to, to being um, with another scientist, especially when you have three kids, it's very hard to get intimate with your, uh, with your, your wife, because you don't have a lot of time for that. Um, but we actually managed to invent a, a way to round this. We, um, we invented a new position. And I know you're thinking like the Kama Sutra and all the, you know, like everybody's figured them all out already, but we came up with a brand new one. I'm pretty sure it's ours. It's just like missionary, except uh, we cup each other's ears so that we can't hear the sound of my kids banging on the door, trying to get into the room where there's no Pokemon in here. <laughs> <laughs> trying to poke your mom. Yeah. Yeah, I misheard. <laughs> uh, there's like a, uh, like a kinkier version where you actually stick your uh, fingers in each other's ears. It, it's it's not because it's like more intimate that, that it's better. It actually physically blocks the sound better, so that you can pretend like you're like in the Caribbean or something, and that you didn't throw away the last decade of your youth. <laughs> All right. Um, a lot of people don't realize this uh, or are surprised by this, but um, most scientists uh, aren't like don't believe in astrology, but I actually do. 
and I'll, I'm going to tell you why. A lot of people say, well, the planets can't... Pos-. If you see, like, uh, like uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, like, well, the planets can't uh, influence your, your birth or whatever like that. But the thing is, uh, I know for a fact that the time and month you're born does make a difference. And to prove that, just, like, just go ask a deer. <laughs> like, they're all Geminis. Like, all of them, they're like... <laughs> Like the Virgos just froze in the like the early winter frost. Okay, <laughs> you imagine the one deer, like the the one deer who keeps being told, like, uh, no, I'm I'm only in. <laughs> it's like I'm only into Aquarius. <laughs> that's the blow off. It's like I know that's bullshit. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, there's another uh, scientific theory here. Um, I really don't like bats. I think they're really nasty little creatures. They're like little upside down chihuahuas. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's a reason why they're so ugly. It's a very good explanation. Uh, bats are what you get when you mix natural selection, you know, powerhouse evolution, and breeding in the dark. <laughs> People could only select our mates in the dark. We would get so ugly so fast. <laughs> I told that joke in New York um, uh, because I, I, they, a lot of New Yorkers know about this event that happened there. It's like the great bl- uh, New York blackout. And so I brought it up. I was like, hey, you guys will like this. Um, so what happened nine months after the blackout is they had a bunch of babies. And I just pointed out that those are really ugly babies. <laughs> but a guy at the, at the show took offense and he stood up and he said, hey, I'm a blackout baby. And in front of 150 New Yorkers, he just proved my point because he was really <laughs> ugly. <laughs> now, on the other end, there's like uh, there's baby seals are adorable. Have you noticed that? Isn't that kind of weird? But they're also clearly delicious and like the easiest thing to eat like ever. Have you seen? They they just lie there looking adorable with like these little innocent eyes, and you could just walk up like you like a. Uh, you know, an Eskimo can just walk up. I'm sorry. Um, an Arctic American can just walk up <laughs> and just bash it in. And the one defense it has is that it just looks adorable. That's its whole thing. That's its strategy. It's just like that. It's like, how hungry are you? Are you hungry enough to bash it? All right. Uh, let's see. Um, recently wanted to make a, uh, a bucket list. Um, but so far all I got was... Uh, Go to Home Depot and pick up a bucket. <laughs> Get very far with that. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. My my wife uh, sent me this this app to download, and it's a it's a training app. This is this is a little personal, so work with me, Pastor. Yeah. Um, it's an app for men like me who don't necessarily have. Uh, a particular set of skills. It's a let me let me just get to it. It's a it's a it's a uh, cunnilingus training app, and the way it works is <laughs> yeah, it's it's like a little vaginal video game. Uh, there's this there's this little thing that's called the 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 digi clit on there, and you a lot of people don't know this, but it, your phone's not just sensitive to to touch uh, your fingers; it's also sensitive to your tongue. So <laughs> you can you can just flick this thing like this. All right. And just <laughs> and you go through me. It's really hard. It's like tongue Tetris. It's very hard. Uh, I didn't get past level one. Okay. In fact, halfway through, there was a little there was a little pop up window that said stop, stop. It's not working. And my phone went to sleep. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, everybody. You did great. Let's get Jeff up here. I know his name. His name is Jeff. I knew that. All right. You know, like I said, we have all kinds of talent. This next lady is very talented. She came all the way from, where you come from? Riverside. From Riverside. Yeah. Riverside is in the house. Give it up for the very talented Miss Valen Sapphire. How's it going? My name's Val Sapphire. This first song I'm about to sing is called Strange Days. Drop me a map of a 
good old days when things were simple and okay strange days stay the same strange days never to raise don't let the darkness take over me vital energy for my enlightening strange things
This is something that I'll never control My nerves will be the death of me My nerves will be the death of me My nerves will be the death of me Ah, oh, no, no, no Thank you Okay your name's Kyle, a comedian. You got a lot of females tonight. It's like yeah. ladies' night out. Woo. Next comedian from the Bay Area. She was back and forth until she decided she liked it in SoCal. So now she's here for good. Give it up for the very funny Miss Nancy Lee. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Oh, dear. Did you guys see that warning uh, that some material may be objectionable or offensive? <laughs> Here I am, <laughs> my turn. Um, so I actually do have some pretty good credits. Uh, I did a little movie with Bobby Lee and a different movie with Ken Jeong. I don't know if you know these semi-famous Asian, famous Asian people. <laughs> and actually, I was in a movie with Kevin Hart, but I have to admit, if you blink, you might miss me. Y you know, that's how small my part was. But uh, if you don't recognize me from those projects, you might recognize me from other things like uh, Match.com or eHarmony. <laughs> <laughs> As Isabel was talking about, she was listing them, I'm like, yup, yup, yeah, yeah. I did all of those, yeah. Christian Mingle, uh-huh. J-Date, yeah, that's the Jewish one. Who doesn't like money, right? Um, <laughs> But I really hate online dating. It's horrible. It just, you know, people say, oh, you might find true love. I'm like, no, it's more like a second job <laughs> where you pay to weed out creepy people, right? <laughs> uh, this really happened to me. I hadn't even met the guy yet, and he hit me up on, it was Match.com. Sorry, Match.com, I don't care. This is a true story. He asked me, without even meeting me, he's like, uh, so what's your bra size, and do you cook fried rice? He actually asked me that. I was so offended. I wrote back right away. I was like, um, I'm a 36C and none of your business. Get a life. Thank you. I do actually have boobs, but that's because I'm not a skinny Asian. <laughs> so I get to gain weight at least, at least here a little bit, right? It's not bad. Um, this other guy that I had met up with, he said he had to confess. He's like, um, I'm actually not monogamous like my profile says. I'm polyamorous. Do you guys know this new bullshit term? I can curse, right? Okay. Yeah. Polyamorous. Yeah, I, I wasn't really sure what it was, and he explained. I was like, oh, poly meaning many, and then amorous, amor, loves. I was like, oh, okay, I get it. So you have more than one STD. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know. All right. That's fair. Um, so I really do hate dating because... You have to work out, right? You can't just be a slob when you're dating. Um, you know, you have to buy salads, lots of veggies and stuff. And I don't know about you guys, but I get really self-conscious when I have to buy phallic-shaped veggies at the grocery <laughs> store. I feel like I'm staring at the cucumbers and carrots too long, or the celery, the yellow squash. That's the crooked one. Um, <laughs> Just anything phallic shaped, I feel like I'm staring too long and people are looking at me and I just want to, I'm crazy, you know, comedians are crazy, so I just want to be like, what? <laughs> so I like my dildos to be fresh and organic and to resemble black eye penises. <laughs> Let's go. Come on, Kwame. Let's go. Okay, you too, Dwayne. <laughs> All right, you too, Keith. Let's go. What? Oh, you want to borrow $20 again? <laughs> yes, okay, you can borrow my card, damn it. Shit, all right. I know that was weird, but I'm weird. <laughs> all of you guys are weird, too, and you know it. Um, so another reason I hate dating, uh, this is just m my complaining hour here, is that it's always awkward when the check comes, right, on a date. I think it's a pretty simple rule. Whoever asks the person out should pay. Right? But I'm around a lot of artistic, creative types, and obviously that means they're broke. Uh, they're cute, but they're broke. And uh, when the check comes, it's always a little awkward. And one time this guy was like, oh, I have an idea. Why don't we go Dutch? And I was like, uh, I have a better idea. Why don't you take your artistic ass and go create a paycheck? Right? <laughs> I don't understand this Dutch thing. 
fine, if you want to go Dutch, then you're just my friend because that's what friends do. You just put yourself in the friend zone. And what is this bullshit about, you know, I'll get this one, you get the next one. I'm like, you dumbass, that is just Dutch at a slower pace. <laughs> that's nothing special, okay? But this one guy who wanted to go Dutch still tried to have sex with me afterwards, and I had to lecture him. And I'm from the Bay Area, and I don't know if you know, but we have a little street sense up there, and I got a, a little attitude with him. I was like, okay, let me tell you something. Do you understand this right here is a gift with purchase? Okay, <laughs> just like the Clinique counter at Macy's, gift with purchase. <laughs> Prostitutes get paid, can I at least get a sandwich? Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, the guy said, yeah. Oh, God. My guy friend got all mad. He got all bro on me. He was like, you're a gold digger. You ain't nothing but a gold digger. I was like, excuse me? Where is this gold thou speaketh of? Okay, you're not Donald Trump. You can call me, you know, a penny digger, a digging for copper maybe. I date broke guys, okay? I'm not asking for a rich guy, but it'd be nice to date a guy who doesn't have to steal toilet paper from restaurants. <laughs> These are true stories, everybody. I'm the victim. I feel sorry for me. Um, so another reason I hate dating so much is because um, I'm actually an intelligent person, but I actually do have a strong faith, too. And I actually believe in science, evolution, and um, in spiritual things. Crazy, right? Um, and... You know, there's some theories out there that sound pretty good, but some theories I've been reading up on lately kind of sound stupid to me, just to support evolution, right? It only supports evolution. And there was an article I read recently that said that paleontologists, you know what paleontologists are? That, like Ross on Friends, right? <laughs> they dig up bones of dinosaurs and stuff. Recently, paleontologists found uh, fossils of whales with legs. Yeah, and I was like, What's the big deal? Go to any Dunkin' Donuts in the South or Midwest. <laughs> You'll find plenty of whales walking around with legs now. Mean, that's a fat joke. Whatever, I was a lot heavier than this, about 30 pounds heavier. And I had a boyfriend back then, and I was happy because I ate chocolate cupcakes and fried chicken while laying down, and I was happy. <laughs> so fuck the fat people, they're happy. Um, another theory, of course, is that age-old one about how we were monkeys just because we have a tailbone that sticks up, right? A vestigial tailbone. And I'm like, just because of that tailbone, that means we were monkeys? My vagina has lips. Does that mean it used to talk? <laughs> okay, that's my time. Thank you, guys. So fun. Hi. Do you ever get curious about how sound is used? Is it in music? Is it in spoken word? Is it in acting or business or just plain exploring the environment? If you are, tune in to Sounds Within with L.V. Smith, Fridays at 8.30 a.m. and 8.30 p.m. See you then. I'm Robert Margaliff. Join me in watching Dan Nicewander on The Now Man Show. And the Dutch thing, I think Dutch things should be dis discussed before you go out on a date. <laughs> Not when the check comes, ah, uh, let's go Dutch. <laughs> okay, wait, I'll be right back. I, I gotta try that. Some of the stuff I hear some guys do, I, I have never done some of this stuff. I gotta try some of this crap. Cause it seems like the lamest guys get the hot chicks. Yeah, I'm serious. Thank you. I, I'm just saying. <laughs> I try to do the right thing, hold a job, have a car, my own place. You know, you got to freaking, like, beg women to come over. Like, my friend, no job, sleeping on my couch. You know, he's catching the bus. He's beating him off with a stick. <laughs> okay, uh, your next comedian, uh, she got, like, three names. You know how, I have, like, Prince have one? She got three. <laughs> Very funny. She's, uh, I don't know where she's from, but she's funny. Give it up for Miss Nikki Davis Miller. Did I say it in the right order? Yeah. Oh, okay, there you go. Oh. Three names. Three names. Yeah, you did it right. Thank you very much. Hi, guys. Hey. I have to pee so bad. <laughs> oh, my God. I heard you scolding the other comedian. I was like, I better wait. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous because Jeff said there was going to be industry here tonight. <laughs> I didn't know he meant the city of industry. <laughs> 
so I guess I feel a little more relaxed now. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. I'm happy to be in Pasadena. I'm happy to see all your faces. Um, you're also really good looking. Uh, I just got back from Arkansas. <laughs> I, I was there for two weeks in Arkansas. All of your faces just went like this. Yeah, which proves my whole point. Because when I look at you and you did that face, all I see are just teeth everywhere. <laughs> Arkansas, they have, I don't know what's in, I think there must be meth in the water. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can't figure it out. I don't know what's wrong with them. Um, but the reason I was there is because I was taking care of my elderly stepmom while my dad was ill. So my, my, ste my stepmom, who is th almost completely blind, half deaf, uh, I basically walked around and you know picked up after her. And to this day, I'm still finding random pills in my pocket that I take. <laughs> and then I Google them. <laughs> in that order. <laughs> like, do I need a seatbelt for this ride or what? 99% uh, of the time it was Imodium, unfortunately. Um, so I'm not gonna have diarrhea for about 27 years. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> um, what else? Oh, so I went to um, see, uh, okay, so I was there with her, my dad was ill, and so I'm not gonna bum you out. My dad actually passed away while I was there, and it's okay. Um, but I wanna share with you the experience I had while I was in the funeral home with my stepmom. And I realized how we're just getting too familiar with each other. We're just getting too like relaxed with our words. I sat down across from the woman in the funeral home, and she goes, um, "Where would y'all like us to put the cremains?" <laughs> and I said, "Excuse me, what did you just say? The cremains? Once we put your dad in, he, you wanted him to be cremated. We'll be handing you back some cremains." And I was like, "Did you just take the word cremation and remains?" <laughs> Like craisins? <laughs> Jesus, that's my dad. Is this ocean spray? I was just mortified. Oh my God. So they handed us back uh, a jar of half my dad, half cranberry, <laughs> which I very promptly put on the mantle uh, next to the smoked almonds. They all had a rich, smoky flavor. Um, okay, let's move on. <laughs> I'm looking at Nancy's face, and she looks like she's going to throw up. <laughs> Nancy, who is just up here. Okay. Um, so I just turned 48 this year. This has been a really big year for me. So that happened. I turned 48. Um, uh, sometimes uh, people will ask, actually ask me when I come off stage, are you really 48? And it's like, really? Who lies up about their age? <laughs> Like, how would that even benefit me to lie and say I was older? And then I thought, well, maybe if I ran into a rapist, I could throw that out there <laughs> to stop him. Just be like, whoa, 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 hold on a minute, mister. I'm 48 years old. I'm like, oh, shit, sorry, lady, my bad. <laughs> you didn't already hit your life alert, did you? <laughs> like, no. Um, so yeah. Oh, and um, I'm separated, almost divorced. I'm almost there. Thank you. You know, you can applaud. It's good. <laughs> I know. Um, I'm almost there. I had to actually, um, I have any divorced couples in the audience? That didn't make any sense. Okay. <laughs> I just want to see if you're awake. Um, so if you've been divorced, you know that uh, if you don't have the $35 to pay the guy from the government to go to your husband's house and serve him the papers, you actually have to give it to him yourself or you have a friend. <laughs> so that's what I did. I had a friend come over to my house and I invited my husband over uh, to see the cats for the last time. <laughs> and, uh, and I served him. And um, it was probably the first time I ever served him, <laughs> now that I think about it. I'm just thinking maybe if I had served him a little more, we might not be having this conversation. <laughs> All right, that got weird. <laughs> um, okay, so I get, am, am I lit now? Is that, what's the deal? It's like we're at 5.30 here. We're just being casual. Yeah? No? I, okay, we're doing this. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> I have to pee so bad. Um, oh, 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 okay. So that's my time. But okay, I have two minutes. Perfect. Thank you. Let me waste a whole minute f to figuring out how much time I have left. This is public <laughs> access. <laughs> this has been really fun, and I still have a minute and 55 seconds. Okay, cool. Um, so let's see. I have more jokes in here. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, you guys, now that I'm 48 years old, I am really, I, 
I feel good because I'm finally at the point in my life where I, I'm not obsessed with being totally beautiful. Like, yeah, um, what was your name? Uh, the residence. Oh, Val. What was, didn't you have, like, Valiance? Valiance, okay, yeah, so beautiful, right? Like, stunningly gorgeous. Like, you look kind of like Olivia Wilde a little bit, is what I was thinking. Yes. Doesn't she kind of, like, she's got, like, she's perfectly symmetrical. And, uh, and I actually saw Olivia Wilde. I swear to God, this is so crazy. I was um, going through Laurel Canyon, and I look out my window, and I see this beautiful creature like you, this totally gorgeous, just like, and she was hiking just in Laurel Canyon, and I just was, and I, I, I saw Olivia Wilde in the wild. <laughs> It was wild. It was wild. Okay. <laughs> um, I had seventeen thousand dollars worth of dental work this uh, this year. Yes. Uh, and I feel like I got jiffy lubed a little bit. You know when you take your car into jiffy lube and, and you you ask for an oil change and then they hand you a bill for seventeen thousand dollars and tell you you need the entire back of your face replaced. <laughs> Well, that's what happened to me. And, you know, I needed, like, crowns, and uh, I had a root... If you don't know what a root canal is, by the way, what they do is they take the bottom of your tooth off, and then they just drill and drill, and they keep drilling until they can suck out $3,000. <laughs> and then they hand you a box of Kleenex to cry into. Okay. I, be <laughs> I believe that's my time. You guys are a great audience. Thank you, Pasadena. Good night. Come on up here, Jeff. Your last performer. You all close with the show you guys know him. Y'all love him. Mr. Uh, Amir Khalil. Hey, can, hey, can I get some volume on my guitar? Oh, damn. There we go. Okay. Hey, my name's Miracle. I got a piss like a motherfucker, too. I don't know the keys to success, but I know the key to failure is trying to please everybody. Who likes that quote? Yes. Good, that's a Bill Cosby quote. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he did some bad things. We can agree on that. Um, but one thing he didn't do uh, was uh, was sell out his credibility, you know, because uh, he he never. No, uh, <laughs> 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 oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Say what you will about Bill, but you know, at least like he doesn't like uh, like sell out like those like your friends that sell those Herbalife pyramid schemes. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, because, you know, after Bill takes advantage of you, he doesn't ask you to sign up your friends. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Give us some referrals. <laughs> you guys, I don't, I don't tell rape jokes because, like, I'm trying to be a clean comic. Um, like Jerry Seinfeld. You guys like Seinfeld? Okay, cool. But I always imagine that if Seinfeld did tell a rape joke, it would sound like this. <laughs> What's the deal with how dry you are? <laughs> So Jeff asked that I close out the show with a song. So um, uh, I'm going to play a song that's for the woman in my life. She's, uh, she's a Latina woman, a uh, lot like Val that was here earlier. Am I right? All right, cool. And, uh, and uh, she's very sweet and loyal, but like jealous as hell, OK? <laughs> Super jealous. So um, she hasn't heard this song yet, and I'm going to play it for you guys. Questions, woman. You ask too many questions, girl. Like whose panties are these? Whose earrings are those? Shit, just won't let it go. It's like a damn interrogation. I'm losing my mind. You killing my vibe, woman. You killing my vibe. What you mean whose panties are these? They're yours. Shit. 
think we need space now, baby. I need a little space now, baby. Like, who the hell's Bobby and where the hell's Bobby live? <laughs> She's like, no, it's Poppy, stupid. I'm calling you Poppy. <laughs> I'm losing my mind, <laughs> killing my vibe in my bone or two because of that misunderstanding and the shame from all of that, and I can't get it back up now. <laughs> Thank you. You guys, it's been a blast performing for you guys. Thank you guys. You guys were all great. Let's bring up back up your old Jeff Hyde. How about a big hand for all the performers y'all have seen? Yay! That's our show, folks. See y'all in a month. Take us home. Don't leave, you gotta take a picture.